It can be also very easy to not feel good enough when we define our career or business success through the versions of other people's success. Nowadays, we are marketed uh, a version of success that looks like six or seven figure businesses. Maybe they belong to a large social media following and maybe big brands that we just can't see ourselves competing with. Now, what if we remove that social pressure? and define our own version of success that's true to our own values and in more alignment in the path that we're on. So today's video is gonna prompt you with those quick and important questions so that you can get off that damn roller coaster of comparison. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Lydia Lee, the Freedom Instigator and Meaningful Work Coach at Screw the Cubicle. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you've subscribed so that you can be notified for every video that we uh, publish here on the channel. And also don't forget to uh, hit the link above this video uh, to subscribe to my email list as well, where I give away so much more content uh, and deeper insights every single week that's beyond these videos. So you can definitely head right there and be part of our Screw the Cubicle family. Now, I know it can be really tempting to be looking at uh, what's going on out there in other people's businesses and their brands and what their career looks like when you think about your own version of success for your own career and business. Now, at some point when you looked out there, there was something inspirational that potentially helped you to get started in your own work and in your business. But also at some point, that inspiration probably turned into comparison. Am I right? Now, I'm the first to admit that happens to me quite a bit as well. And so I too have to be really mindful about not looking at other people's um, goals and their plans and what they do in their business and making myself feel bad that if I'm not doing the exact same things that they're doing, I'm failing. The truth of the matter is um, you might be comparing yourself to the wrong things. So for example, I used to look at businesses 10, 15 years in the making when I was in my first year of business and, and going, how the hell am I not there yet? How the hell am I not on five different social media platforms and doing all these different videos every single day? How, where do they find the time? Uh, and the truth of the matter is these businesses have a team. As a solopreneur, I don't. And so when I compare myself to not being good enough because I see so much of their content or their brand being out there more than mine, I'm really comparing apples and oranges. I'm in grade one of my business if I was in my first year of business and they're in grade 10 or grade 12 of their business. And of course, they're gonna look more advanced. They might be doing different strategies that are not meant for me and I should be doing what matters on the first year of business. So if you find yourself comparing yourself to um, big brands and um, influencers that have been out out there in the market for a long time just stop doing that or just be mindful to take what is actually valuable that makes you feel good you know rather than things that make make you brings you down right from your own business so i want to start with talking about a few other different deep questions you can ask yourself when it comes to defining success for your business. That's beyond some of the things that you don't get right away as a business owner, right? Which is maybe the revenue where you want to be, of what you want to be making. And even things like your email list or your following for social media, those numbers don't always define whether or not you are successful in your current path in entrepreneurship or as a freelancer or as a consultant or whatever self-employment pathway you're on. Okay, so we need to reel it back a little bit and I wanna just like give you a bit more encouragement today that your success is not an overnight thing. It's gonna take some incremental effort for you to focus on for the next many years to come, uh, but you need to start feeling good that you're progressing forward with your business and we need to just kind of shift our attention a little bit to different metrics, if you will, to define success on our terms. So the first question I want to uh, prompt you today is how do you define fulfillment for your work? So ask yourself, how do I define fulfillment with my work? So I want you to think beyond numbers and likes, and I want you to think about things like, how do I know when I have personal enjoyment in the work that I'm building or the business I'm building? What makes work fun for me? What are my own deep interests in my work that's beyond profit and revenue and number of people in my Facebook page or my Instagram page. What do you get out of your business and your work that's gonna allow you to know that you're on the right track when it comes to a successful version of your work? Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't focus on numbers and profiting, obviously businesses should be profiting, but in the beginning of time, 
It is also good to question that you're building something that matters to you. Success is not just defined by numbers. Success is defined by how you feel about your work, the impact you're making, whether or not you're enjoying yourself. And if you don't find yourself enjoying yourself, then maybe certain tactics and strategies aren't the right version for you. And you should figure out another way to actually get to your version of success. The second question is what other values or assets beyond money can help me define what is success for me? So for example, okay, I forget sometimes, and I'm sure you do too, that time is an asset. So for example, I have uh, stopped looking at how much money I should be making to feel successful. Like for a long time, I thought that was six or seven figure businesses, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video. But actually what it is, is like, what do I want this money to even be paying for? When I look at my life, when I look at how much I need actually to afford the kind of lifestyle I want, to be honest, guys, I don't actually need to be making six figures at all. I calculated that my lifestyle costs, especially now that I have a spouse, like a boyfriend, I'm not married yet, okay? Uh, we live together now, we share costs and expenses, so thankfully my rent and th certain things like that um, goes down in half. And we did a calculation, and in Canadian dollars, we only need to be making about $40,000 each a year to afford the traveling lifestyle we have living in pretty good places all around the world. Now, all of a sudden, that completely removes pressure from me. If I decide not to work for half the year and to take a sabbatical or write my book or take time off, this is a good thing. This is what I might be building towards. I don't need to be only having the flagpole goal of making right six, seven figures in order to feel successful. What if success to me actually meant I had more time to myself, more time for my boyfriend, more time for my family, more time for my friends, more flexibility to travel and decide not to work for three, four months a year. Um, what would that look like? Why should I have to make six figures at all? <laughs> and that was kind of a really interesting thought that I had to think about. And so um, that asset of time is something we disregard sometimes as the thing we're also reaching for. So I, I talk about this because I have a lot of clients, for example, they could absolutely lead a very comfortable life being a consultant, making no more than 70 grand a year. But yet sometimes they keep pushing themselves to make that hundred grand where they don't need to, where they can actually save time. So I just want to plant that seed so that you're being really um, real about why you need to make a certain amount of money and does it really give you the lifestyle choices that you have. Other assets and values could be time, flexibility, and autonomy, right? So if you could have flexibility when you work and how you work or have autonomy about the types of projects you pick to work on or clients that you want to work on, like those assets also need to be infused in your success formula so that you know you're working towards something that you actually, like a business and career, right? That you actually want to keep. The third question is, how do you like to work? Like if you were to feel successful in your career and your business, what is your ideal way of working? We forget that actually making a lot of money, but then not having, you know, the structure of a model of work or a style of working or who we're working with or what kind of projects we're working on or are, uh, you know, are we doing variety of projects or in-depth projects? Like we don't think about these ingredients for a fulfilling model of work. And that needs to be infused into your version of success as well. So you want to think about your schedule. Like, are you working nights, evenings, mornings? Maybe it's both. If you're someone that likes big breaks in between, um, think about your model of work. Do you like to work one-on-one? -on -one? Do you like to work with the group settings? Do you like to teach versus consulting and advising or coaching? Um, you know, do you like to create things like courses and then um, not be a part of the teaching and coaching part. You just want to actually create products that people will buy. So your model of work will also define your success because if it's a model that's in alignment with your personality and your style of work, you're going to just do better work. You want to think about things like, do you need variety or in-depth work or, or work with depth, if you will? So for example, I'm someone that sort of needs to um, have fresh projects every quarter. So that defines the way that I... Um, allow, you know, most of my coaching clients do about three months with me. And that's a reason for that. I would like to switch it up and actually either work with them on a different type of project, or I would like a new client every three months. And so you want to be able to think about that for you as well. Some people love in-depth work where they want long-term clients they work with for a whole year. And some people need a lot of variety. They're just kind of built like that. And so you want to think about, again, the way that you package yourself, the way that you offer your services will be in alignment with the kind of style that you want to work, right? Uh, are you more of an immersion person versus like short sprints of uh, work that you like to do, right? Are you more seasonal? Like I'm starting 
learned to find out that or discover that I like to work in seasons. What that means is that um, I like to be like summer is my sort of not a lot of clients kind of season. And I work on things like operations and content production and planning high level strategies for my business. I don't take on as many clients over the summer. Um, and so I like the idea of seasons and working in seasons. It kind of fits the way that I operate in my personal life. The next question I would ask yourself in terms of defining success for your career and business is thinking about collaborations and partnerships that you should be proud of. Now, here's the thing. If you are someone that's sort of feeling a little dejected and demotivated that you don't have a large email list or huge social media following or someone that has significant numbers and don't look at those numbers only. I can tell you there are many successful people with not a lot of people following them in social media and they have just different strategies of outreach. Okay. Social media is not the only way to market your business. So when you think about, um, getting a bigger reach, maybe to a bigger audience, you want to maybe move away from social media for a minute because that takes time to build. And you want to think about like what active pitches or proposals or active, like, um, you know, for you looking for collaborations or partnerships that you can be proud to uh, do, right? Where you can actually together be able to reach larger audiences. Now, that's something I definitely did uh, to be successful in my first two years of business is not by like trying to struggle all the hacks to build my list, but actually to have intention of who I pitch like a, co a collaborative webinar with, uh, where I go and do my free workshops, uh, where I get uh, interviewed at to write platforms that already hold certain audiences. Like that could be a way for you to get to your version of success a lot faster through relationships rather than these passive relationships like social media. So that's another uh, question to think about um, and feel a little bit more at ease about, about your, your version of success. And lastly, um, how do you prefer to market yourself where you can feel like you're doing things uh, in a successful way on your own terms, right? Now, marketing is obviously very non-negotiable for businesses uh, that want to be seen and be visible and get clients for their business. But your version of success could of marketing in that capacity could be based on actually you show up sharing your voice in a way that you want to show up doing it. Now, if you find yourself doing like 101 things to market, very likely that's the problem. And you need to pick one really, really intentional marketing pathway in order for you to actually feel like that's your best way of influence in this platform. And it gives a, a platform for your kind of voice. So for example, video for me is easy. I don't think too much about it. I don't get anxious about it. Writing, I want to have like a heart attack every time I write because I keep editing myself and I keep being a perfectionist. So writing is not my best form of communication, even though I can write and enjoy it at times, video is just easier for me. So if you're able to speak about your word, uh, your work, sorry, influence people in a deeper way, transform people's lives in a version of you that you can give out there, you know, whether it's a podcast, a YouTube channel, whether it is social media following, whether it's blogging, right, whatever it is that's your jam, you can ensure that that's the version you are by making sure that you're picking the right platform that captures your voice and your style of communication and just doing that really, really well. And you'll get to your version of success a lot faster than taking on a few different platforms all at once, okay? So I hope that was um, a really, really good way for you to think about different aspects of making your business successful for you, but also redefining your metrics. Like if you can do some of these questions and infuse a lot of these components of your answers into how you model your work, how you build your business plan, how you build your marketing plan, your business, and focus more on that infusing, right? You're going to feel a lot more successful than only paying attention to the numbers uh, game as your only metric of success. Now, if any of that resonated with you, please comment below and let me know uh, which tip is the thing you're going to implement in your business and your work right now. Uh, and where have you maybe also been trapped in the comparison game and what are you committing to stopping right now? Okay. Um, thank you so very much for joining me for another video today. And I can't wait to see you again next week for a brand new video. And again, don't forget to subscribe or hit the notification button um, to be notified for new videos coming your way, or simply just uh, register to be a subscriber on my email list and you'll get all the insider tips uh, and uh, bigger insights every week that I don't share here only on my channel and it's more intimate on my email list. Okay. See you soon and have a great day.